friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Grace and this is day six in the week in my life as a content creator. It is Saturday, but to be quite frank, I am not filming this on Saturday. So my Saturday ended up looking a whole lot different than I had initially envisioned. It was the end of a very, very long week and on Saturday I chose to make my content that I had planned and finish out my Christmas in July. But after that, I rested. Wesley and I went for a walk and we watched movies all afternoon. And I think we ordered takeout that night too. So we had a very restful day. And something that one of my really good friends who is a very successful entrepreneur has shared with me is that rest is one of the most important things you can do for yourself and you can do for your audience because you can serve others better when you are well rested. And I know that I make my best content when I have taken a day to just take a deep breath. And I also had planned for this video to be my Q&A and I wanted to give enough time for my Q&A to generate all those awesome questions. So I'll go ahead and show you the clips from my Saturday, but recognize that most of my Saturday was quite truthfully spent right here on this couch. Okay guys, it is Saturday, it is Christmas in July, and my smart self got overwhelmed this week. Not overwhelmed, but I got busy this week so I didn't get to take my Christmas in July picture yet. So we're about to go take it now. And I think what we're gonna do, cause there's like a sandy beach area outside the apartment, is we've got this mirror and I wanna do one of those cool like mirror pics looking into it. And then I'm gonna take some other little Christmas props. So I've got a canister. And I think we're gonna take the tree top, like the very top part of the tree, this thing out, and then I'm gonna put on some Christmassy PJs, and we're gonna go take pictures in the sand, and it'll be like Christmas in July. So we'll see how this turns out. I'll definitely bring you guys along and let you know. Okay, so this is my fit. I've got Wesley's Santa boxers, a white tank top, and a flannel to get down there. I probably won't wear it for the picture. But we're doing a cool concept with the mirror in the sand, and we've got some Christmas decorations that we're gonna set up like around the mirror in the sand. And I'm excited to see how this turns out once we get down there and do a time lapse of kind of getting it all set up and taking our pictures, and I'll show you what they look like at the end. Okay, so we just did the shoot. My, something happened to my other camera, so TBD on that, but this is what it ended up being our little setup, and I cannot wait to show you all the pictures because they turned out so, so cute. Shout out to my top star photographer, but I'm really, really pleased. So that was my day. I made some content. I thought I broke my camera, which was a little scary, and then I had planned for the rest of this video to be a QA. and a If you'll notice, I'm not in my typical setting because I want this to be a comfy, cozy session where I can talk to you guys about my life as a content creator, and this was something that was really important to me to put in this series because I can tell you guys all of the stuff that I think you guys want to know, but I don't know what you guys are looking to get out of this. And so that is what this portion is about. I've got really great questions about being a content creator, how to get started, sort of some tips and tricks for growth and all that good stuff. And then I have some fun questions at the end, like what's your favorite attraction? What's your favorite Disney park? So I'm gonna be sure to get to all of them. Also, before I get into the Q&A, I do wanna give a disclaimer. I'm not an expert on this. There's probably so many way more qualified people to talk about it, but I think I had 500 followers at the start of quarantine and I've grown too close to to 6,000 now, several months later. And so if I can teach you guys anything, if anyone can learn from my experiences or what I've been through, that would be a win for me, but I am definitely no expert at all. But we're gonna start off with the first question, which was how did you start and was it hard? So my start looks a whole lot different from most people. I was supposed to do the Disney College program Fall Advantage 2020, and that was gonna be the start of my five-year plan with Disney. I was gonna do the Disney College program, then a PI, then work in Disney PR communications, and just live my best life working for the mouse. And then as most of you know, coronavirus hit and all of the Disney programming got canceled for the rest of the year. And I was left without a job in a jobless market and I didn't know what to do. And I sat down with my husband who I cannot express to you how supportive he has been throughout this entire process for me. But he basically said, you know, what do you want to do? You have all this time on your hands. Like, do you want to do PR communications or is there something else you'd like to do? And I started the Sunny SG in November of 2019 before I made my move down here. I just kind of thought it would be something I would have fun with. And then I fell in love with making content and I ended up on the platform TikTok. And obviously that video of me doing my Dumbo spiel took off. So I ended up diving head first into content creation because I've known since I was a senior in high school that this is what I wanted to do, that I wanted to be an influencer. And so I looked at Wesley and I said, I 
think this is what I want to do. And he said, all right, then this is what you're gonna do. And so for 40 hours a week, I started making content, reaching out to brands and doing research. Oh, so much research, reading books and reading blogs about kind of how to get started and what are the best ways to go about this new career path I'd started on. So was it hard? Not really, because I had such a passion for this that I knew that this is something I wanted to do and I wanted to be successful at it. I do have a lot of people that ask like when I quit my full-time job and if this is something that I would like recommend for people to quit their full-time job. And honestly, I didn't have a job to quit. I hope that answers that question for you guys. This can though become a job and it has become my job and basically, for me, it became my job because I didn't have another option. I knew that this is something that I wanted to do and I had the time, I had nothing but time. I was stuck in quarantine. I had nothing but time to make content and I think what set me apart from other creators during that time is I did post pictures from the parks and pictures from my past vacations, but I also started making new content and I started putting fresh pictures out and grabbing Wesley and saying, hey, how can we make our space somewhere that's awesome? How can we use the blank walls in our apartment? How can we use our bed? Like, How can we use so many different elements of our apartment to make content? Because it's one of the best pieces of advice I can also give you is keep it fresh because 100% people love to see fresh content. How can this become a job? Let me answer that question. It can become a job when it starts to become something you're passionate about and something you absolutely love and something that you can realistically make an income out of. Because here's the thing, this is so much fun and I absolutely love it and I'm not comfortable revealing my numbers, but this cannot technically be a job unless there is some form of compensation from it. So if you are in a position where you can quit your job, if you are making enough money you want this to become your job, or if you're like me and you just simply didn't have another option. Now, if I had had a full-time job, would I have quit it to do this? Probably not. However, since I was in the position where I literally didn't have any choice, this became my gig. How did I know I was capable of being successful with this? So after my TikTok video took off and I started growing on that platform, I realized that I could use that as a tool to push the other platforms where it's much easier to monetize and where it's much easier to make money and make it a job. Like I've said in another video, the money is not in TikTok right now and the money probably won't be in TikTok for a while. The money is still in Instagram and in YouTube. So if you are looking to make it a job and actually monetize, those are the platforms you've gotta be growing on. And I realized that I could use TikTok as a means to grow my other platforms and that's when I realized oh my goodness, I can do this. I can grow my platforms and make awesome friends along the way. Where do you find inspiration for your posts and pictures and inspiration for your poses? So a lot of my inspiration actually comes from other creators and from Pinterest. And it's not copying to say that you got inspiration from another creator as long as you credit them. So anytime I have gotten inspiration from another creator, I absolutely have given them credit. But a lot of times my inspiration comes from my closet. I'll see clothes or I'll buy a piece of clothing and I'll I'll be like, oh my goodness, I wanna make an Instagram picture of this, or oh, I have a whole outfit plant I wanna do out of this. So for me, it's one of those things, like I usually will buy something with a whole outfit in mind, or like I'll be in my closet, like searching through, and I'll be like, oh my goodness, like I totally know a picture I wanna do with this, or I'll get inspiration that way. So one time I told someone, I was like, I get my inspiration from my closet. They were like, what do you mean? I said, well, my clothes often, since I love style, they'll drive my ideas and they'll drive my posts. So if I have like a fun pink shirt, I'll be like, oh, well, how can I be creative with this in a TikTok or or in an Instagram, my earring just fell out, I'm gonna put that back in. And then picture pose inspiration. So honestly, I just play with movement. So if I can lean, if I can have like a foot propped up, I love to play with angles as well. And I have an amazing husband who is my Instagram husband photographer who loves to play with angles as well and is very patient with me until I find a picture that I love. And again, I want to my content to be different. And that's something that I've always said will make a creator stand out in their community. So within like the Disney community, most everyone has the same four parks that they're getting access to, so how can you make those four parks different for you? Finding unique areas or unique outfits, basically making yourself stand out in the community. How do I plan? So a lot of my planning will go based off of my weekly schedule and I do different types of planning for the different platforms. So with TikTok, I try and post at least one to two a day and I will plan my park days. So if I know I'm going to Magic Kingdom, I know I'm going to try and get two to three TikToks out of each park. I do keep a calendar as well that I keep track of where I'm going that week and what content I can get based off of where I'm going. And I also am very good about planning ahead and batch creating. There's rarely a day 
day that I'm like, oh, I don't know what Instagram picture I'm gonna post because I usually have five to 10 on bank that I've never seen another platform before that I'm ready to post at any time because I don't go to the parks every single day. How do you manage three platforms? Well, I don't have good time management skills. Like that's the one thing I really wish I was better about is my time management skills because I literally, I wake up around eight, nine, I am, doing engagement and responding to emails and DMs, and then I'm creating content or posting content or editing and all of that stuff, and then I'm doing more engagement and all of that stuff until probably five. My husband gets off around five, 5.30, he gets home around six, and I'm usually working till about seven. So if that tells you anything, I've been working my butt off since I started this whole process and since I decided I wanted to dive first into it full time. But I knew that in order to grow, like I wanted to grow and to have the presence that I was going to have, I had to put in the work and the time and the energy to make myself stand out across platforms. Do I make my own work schedule? Yes, I do. Unless I am working around the schedule of another photographer or a fellow creator, I make my own schedule and I decide when I do what I'm gonna do. This is a really, really good question and I was hoping it was gonna get asked because I think it is so important to know going into this. Have friends or family thought you weren't going to make it? Yes. Absolutely. Definitely know that I have had people who at first, it's not that they didn't think I was going to make it, it's just that they didn't quite understand what I was doing and where I was headed with it. It was kind of like, oh, are you just like posting on social media all the time? It was helping them understand what I was doing and that the end goal was growth and monetization and making this a full on career, not just posting on Instagram for fun. There is no age limit. I know a lot of things do though require you to be over the age of 18 when it comes to working with brands because of imaging rights and minor rights and on TikTok you can't actually be a part of their creator program until you are 18 so it, there's not technically an age limit however there are a lot of laws within communication and within the FTC that do prevent younger creators from getting all the same deals and opportunities as the older creators not for any reason except for minors and minors in the media there's a lot of rules I got my degree in public relations so I do know a decent amount about that I had to take an advanced journalism class, um, journalism and communication law. So if you have any questions about that, I'm more than happy to answer those as well. Advice to make it your full-time job. Chase it earnestly and if it's something you want, dream big, but know that you're gonna have to put in a ton and ton, a ton of time, energy, effort, research, all of that good stuff. It's not like you go viral and overnight, oh, look at me, I'm this famous person now and I have like all these followers and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I still am not like a big creator by any means. I am such a small creator on the scope of all of these people and I know that I have such a long way to go and I am not giving you any of this advice as an expert. I'm just sharing what I've learned along the way. To make it your full-time job though, I can tell you I'm still in the process of it being a full-time job, like truly making the money that that I would make in a full-time job. It's working hard, it's working smart, it's being creative and chasing it with your whole heart. So if you work a nine to five job, recognize that from five to 10, you're gonna be going to photo shoots, you're gonna be working on your content, you're gonna be researching on the weekends. Like you have to want it and you have to want to go after it. Do you bring multiple outfits to the parks? Yes. I've been very open about that on my Instagram. I bring usually two to three outfits to my different days at the parks. I think this week when I went, I only brought two, no, I brought three to Magic Kingdom. I usually bring two or three outfits to each of my days at the parks because I do want to batch create. Since I'm not going every single day, I'm usually going to one of the parks once every couple weeks. So when I do go, I want to be mindful and get all the content. How do you know when to film? So I don't ever go into a day that I'm vlogging or I'm doing a video that I'm just like, I'm just gonna film everything and hope a video comes together at the end. So one of the videos that I'm actually working on next week is going to be a thrifting video that I'm really excited about, but I have a concept idea for the video and I know what shots I wanna get because I think that's one of the things about vlogging that will make if you do want to do vlogging or you do wanna do YouTube is having a video idea set ahead of time. There's so many people that you can find at park vlogs. It's what can you do that makes you stand out and one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is know your video concept before you go into the park and know what you're gonna be filming and know what shots you need to get because otherwise you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of footage of a whole bunch of nothing and not know what to do with it and not know what to tell your video and then it just becomes a hubbub blub and then that sucks because you spend a whole day making content best tips for people wanting to expand do it 
100%. I think that there is such a thing as being in your niche and knowing your niche audience and then having your niche audience grow with you. So like for me, I started out doing pretty much mostly Disney content, but I knew all along I wanted to do Florida style and Orlando content, theme park, you know, more than just Disney. And so when I chose my username, I chose my handle, my brand, the Sunny SG, I chose something that I knew would go beyond just Disney. That's my first piece of advice. If you want to expand, get Disney out of your name, get anything Disney related out of your name because that's gonna give you so many more opportunities with so many more brands and companies that are gonna be wanting to work with you. Show people you're passionate about whatever you're expanding to. Like if you've been just doing Disney and you wanna do style now, show people that you're really, really passionate about style and you may lose followers, that's okay. You're gonna gain so many other new followers though who see your passion behind what you're doing. What is the hardest part? The hardest part are the days when you feel like you're not growing. The hardest part are the days when you feel like you've been putting in 110% of your effort and you've gotten absolutely no new emails or no new people reaching out to work with you and you feel like you haven't been growing as quickly as you have been. Those days are hard and it feels like, oh, have I just stopped here? But remembering that every day is different and some days and weeks are gonna be slow, but that just means try something different. You know, maybe you should reach out to a brand this week. Is there someone you've really been looking forward to working with? I'm doing some self analysis on what can I be doing differently instead of, oh, well, just not growing this week. Guess that's that. No, that's not how it works, especially when you're self-employed, you've constantly got to be pushing yourself to do better and to be a better creator. I hate to tell y'all, but there are still so many questions. Can you make a livable salary off of content creating full-time? Absolutely. There are so many people who this is their career. They are making so much more than you would see in traditional nine to five as influencers and content creators, but that doesn't happen overnight. And that's not the stage where I'm at right now. It is definitely something that does come with time and with growth. How can you afford to create content when you first start? Alia gave some great advice about this. Um, go to thrift stores, secondhand, Poshmark, all of those sites are amazing. And also it's about being creative. You don't have to have a brand new lounge fly to make awesome content, you know? like. What can you use that you do have to make something special and something that stands out? Look at Pinterest. And if you do want to buy new stuff, look at secondhand places because they always have awesome things. Where did I go to school? University of Tennessee. Go volunteers. We love to see it. How did you get your page out there? TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Please go watch the video about going viral. That video is so important to recognizing that Instagram is a saturated platform and if you are wanting to grow on Instagram or YouTube, you've gotta be on something else as well that is helping to push your content. Am I a part of an engagement group? No, absolutely not. I don't plan on being ever again either because engagement groups actually end up hurting your engagement in the long run because Instagram can tell when you're in a group saying, oh my gosh, go like my new post. They don't like that and they don't favor people who do that either. And also I want to know that my comments and my likes are from people genuinely enjoying my content, not just because they felt like they had to. That to me is so much more rewarding. I'd rather have 20 comments of people are genuinely interested and genuinely appreciating what I've done than 100 comments of people. It's like people having to do that. Absolutely would much rather have organic likes and organic engagement. Is it cool to be recognized? Only happened a few times so far, but yeah, it's really, really cool. It kind of threw me off. I was like, oh my gosh, people know who I am, but it was really cool. I won't lie, that was awesome. How do you go about being a brand rep? So being a brand rep is really awesome. It's a great thing if you're a beginner and you're wanting to get more into content creating and content creating for someone that's not just yourself. Something that I always have noticed is buying from a brand is usually the best way to go about being a brand rep because Brands want to know that you genuinely want to rep for them because you love their product, not just because, oh, well, they were looking for a brand rep and I want free stuff. So if you're going to be a brand rep for someone, be sure you have bought from them and actually enjoyed their product first. What do you use to edit your YouTube videos? Any advice to beginners? Guys, I had someone recently ask me, oh my gosh, you edit an iMovie? I had no idea. iMovie is awesome and iMovie is free. You don't have to have a thousands of dollars software to make awesome content. It's about the content, not the editing software. My best advice is watch YouTube videos on how to edit if you wanna learn cool editing tricks because YouTube is the best resource to get better at YouTube. But yeah, it's about your content, not your editing, 100%. I'm filming really good lighting, good natural lighting if you can, and if not, use a ring light because that kind of helps do the trick too. Advice for new creators. Do not be afraid to step 
outside of your comfort zone. Absolutely do not be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to create something that not everyone else is creating because you want to stand out in the community and also reach out to other creators and ask them if they have any advice for you because if they're anything like me, I know I love helping new creators because I was in your shoes and they've been in your shoes too. So asking for advice, asking for tips is always okay. And oftentimes you can build really cool relationships through that as well. Do I have a hard time coming up with content or getting in ruts? Uh -huh. TikTok's the only place I sometimes will get in ruts just because Instagram I usually have. I think that there's more ideas for content in my head than I'm ever going to actually have time or energy to create. But with TikTok, because you are having to put out something, one to two videos every single day, and sometimes I get into ruts of like, oh, should I drop this series? Should I do something new? What kind of videos are people looking for right now? Is there any trends I can get on? And sometimes it can just be a little bit discouraging because it's so overwhelming with how many different possibilities there are on there. So that's the only app I really get into ruts with. And YouTube is just very draining and it takes a lot of time to record and edit and upload so I don't really get in ruts with YouTube I did get in a rut when I realized I didn't like just making Disney informational videos which I knew I didn't but I felt like I should be because there was so much information coming out about Disney at the time and so I was like oh well, I should be being I should be reporting on this like I should be the first one to talk about this and I was like but I don't want to be a theme park reporter I want that's not what I love making so I switched my content really easily and that's gotten me straight out of that rut What's it like being a content creator? Fun, rewarding, joy-filled, every day is different. I absolutely love it. It is so much fun and now being in this, I would not have it any other way. I love it. I love all the people I've met through this, through the different social media platforms. I love DMing with you guys on Instagram and chatting with y'all on TikTok lives. Like I just love it. It's been so rewarding. And to know that I've like left my mark on the world in some way, that's awesome. Who takes my pictures? Wesley. My self timer because self timers are actually awesome. Your phone takes fabulous pictures. Also, you don't need fancy equipment to take awesome pictures because most of mine are on my iPhone. Alia, my really good friend, Alia Bershon, takes incredible pictures. So she's taken a lot of my recent pictures. She set a budget for purchasing Disney merch. Probably should do that, but I have to see and love something three times in order to purchase it or have like an Instagram idea immediately. Be like, oh my goodness, I need this for this piece of content that I was already gonna make. But the three times rule has ended up saving me so much money because usually by the time I see it the third time, I don't want it anymore. Or if I still want it by the third time, then I really, really want it. Do I do engagement within specific hashtags or just within my posts? I do engagement on both. And I think that the $1.80 rule is really great. If you haven't, I'm not gonna explain it all on here, but definitely look up the $1.80 rule because it's a great rule of thumb for doing engagement with hashtags. Advice to smaller creators on how to stand out. Be unique and be original. And I feel like a lot of Disney creators get this way. It's like they feel like they have to be in a theme park to get Disney content or no one's gonna like their pictures. It's like, you're a Disney creator? Disney is not just theme parks. Disney is so worldwide and like make content that's not just in the theme parks. And if you're making it in the theme parks, make it different in the theme parks. You know what I mean? Like make yourself stand out by being different than everyone else and like creating new ideas or going to different areas or making content at home. There's so many different ways. Advice for growing your YouTube channel so quickly. I absolutely think that my YouTube channel has gone quickly because I've been pushing it on my other platforms. I'm not gonna lie to you, this series has given me the biggest growth I've seen yet. And so doing series or having something that people can come back for and engaging with people on YouTube, creating something that's gonna be engaging that people feel like they want to be a part of. That's why I like vlogs so much because I love feeling like I'm going along with whoever is recording the video. And I pushed it on TikTok. I've been pushing my YouTube channel on TikTok a whole lot more lately and we're almost to a thousand subs. I can't believe it, I'm so excited. Yeah, a lot of Disney YouTubers said the same thing and I'm pretty sure this question was asked by a Disney YouTuber. So do something different. Think outside the box, don't create what everyone else is creating. That's my best advice. If you wanna grow quickly on any platform, do something different and make yourself stand out. Oh, my camera died, but I'm back. We're gonna finish this out. My last couple of questions are more fun park-based questions. Best park outfits or the best place to buy Disney clothes on a budget? So Target actually has a ton of Disney t-shirts. And if you wanna buy small shop tees, the best thing to do is reach out and see if they have any brand wraps because their brand wraps usually have discount codes. The thing is, you can find park outfits to fit your budget. Nothing specific makes a cute park outfit. It's putting your own twist onto it. Um, so styling things within your content 
And then my favorite type of content to post. So as much as I love posting Disney park content, um, my favorite content to post is actually content that's either a styled shot. So like my content I did when I did my collab with Bobble Bar, um, that was really fun. So any way that I have to be creative and put my own spin on things, I really like those. So any type of creative content. My favorite thing about living close to Disney, being able to pop over whenever I want to. And the opportunities that come with living really close to Disney are really awesome as well because you know I do get to make content actually in the theme parks and that's really awesome as well best thing I've ever done at Disney or Universal at Universal it was definitely when I got to get my wand that was really awesome and do that experience and riding Hagrid's for the first time was really cool um, and at Disney I've got so many special memories with Disney so it's just forever an awesome place and will forever hold a special place in my heart favorite Disney rides are Soren and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway favorite Disney resort is the Grand Floridian and the Boardwalk. I love both of those and I've got the opportunity to see the Grand Floridian but not the Boardwalk yet. And then my favorite park, I love studios and I love Magic Kingdom a lot but I also love, I just love them all. I love the Disney theme parks as a whole as well. All right guys, well that's all I have for today. I'll do another Q&A soon, I'm sure. Be sure you're following me on my Instagram because I will be posting the poll over there. But speaking of Instagram, if you're not already following me on my socials, be sure to do so. I am the Sunny SG on Instagram and on TikTok. If you haven't watched the rest of the videos in this series, I highly encourage you to do so. And then tomorrow's video is one of my most anticipated videos and that is monetization and growth. So I hope you'll stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe if you are not already. You don't want to miss this next video or the rest of the series. Hope you guys have a sunshiny day. Dave.